My hands. Gods, my hands. The gloves are long gone, melted away like wax in the furnace. The skin is a ruin now, cracked and blistered. Some places, it's gone completely, showing raw muscle and bone white as death. The pain should be unbearable. A firestorm that drives a man mad. That was weeks ago. Now it's a dull ache. The nerves burned out long since. I think I'm used to it. We found the stuff by accident. Just another shift, blasting rock apart for the company on this damn dust ball at the fringe of known space. They don't even give it a proper name. Just a designation and a work order. Old Jacko hit the mother load. Only not gold, or anything you'd want to find. The charge went off, and something wrong sprayed out the wall. It ate through his suit like it was tissue paper. Not acid, though. Not the kind that burns and sizzles. Worse. It twisted him up, turned his bones soft, grew his face all long and wrong. He screamed, real high-pitched and terrible, as his body did things a body shouldn't. Then, then he just kind of went slack. Should have shot him right then, save him the misery, but we were scared and none of us had the stomach for it. I wish I'd been braver then because what came later was a thousand times worse. After a while he got up, walked over to that oozing black hole in the rock face and knelt like he was praying. Dipped his ruined hand in and pulled out a lump of the stuff. Thick, oily, shimmering like it had its own awful light. That's when the screaming started again, but different this time. Not terror, but something. Twisted, hungry. We ran, but it's a small place, that mining rig. Nowhere to hide for long. Found us one by one. Not to kill, never to kill. It made us join. Each of us twisted and broken, but kneeling around that pit, dipping our hands, feeding on it. I try to remember what it tasted like, bitter, acrid, and somehow cold down my throat. But that's not what I remember most. It's the hunger, a pit in your chest that claws at you. It's the sense that I've found something precious, something more important than food, or water, or sleep, or even life, as I used to know it. And that terrifies me more than anything ever has. I shuffled towards the new guy. He was huddled in a corner, shaking like a leaf, eyes wide with terror. Seen that look a hundred times before. Didn't waste words. He wasn't ready to understand. Just grabbed him. Hard enough to make him whimper, and dragged him towards the ooze pit. The others, four now, didn't look up. Just kept dipping in their hands, pulling out the black gunk and shoving it into their mouths with a disgusting moaning sound. He fought me, of course. What man wouldn't, didn't matter. He was weak, fueled by fear, not the hunger that drove the rest of us. Shoved his face into that weeping hole in the rock face. He screamed, muffled as the stuff touched his skin. Didn't last long. The scream turned into a gurgle, then a wet choking sound. I pulled him back, his face already warping and twisting. His eyes met mine, recognition flashing inside their milky depths. Then gone. Replaced by that same hunger, raw and desperate. He reached for the pit, a wordless plea escaping his lips. Careful, Greenhorn, rasped a voice. Turned to see old man Harris shuffle closer. His whole left arm was gone replaced by a mess of glistening black tendrils that wriggled in time with his ragged breaths. He held a chunk of the stuff in those grasping claws, offering it to the new guy. Take a bite. It'll ease the pain. For a while. The new guy took it, hesitant at first, then with growing desperation. Shoved the whole thing in his mouth, eyes fluttering closed as a wave of something washed over him. He opened them again, a feral gleam in their depths. Looked at me, then at the pit, a moan escaping his throat. He joined the others, another mindless husk feeding its addiction. Part of me hated him, hated them all, hated what we'd become, but mostly I just felt that emptiness growing with every passing moment. My hand twitched, reaching for my belt. The pouch hanging there held a single battered syringe. My last dose. Just a taste. The voice in my head hissed, 
just a little to take the edge off. You'll get another one later, right? The voice had gotten persuasive lately, easier to give in than fight. Stared at the syringe, my hand clenched tight. Suddenly the harsh screech of the alarm cut through the air. Red light strobed, bathing us in an eerie glow. All movement stopped. We looked at each other, confusion on our ruined faces. The alarms here only ever went off for one thing. A new shipment. More fresh meat for the grinder. The alarm tore a scream from the new guy, a raw, primal sound. The rest of us just stood there, a tableau of broken men, our faces masks of warped flesh. New shipment, old man Harris wheezed, the sound like dry leaves scraping together. His voice held a twisted eagerness that made my skin crawl. Fresh meat for the offering. An offering, that's what the company called it. Didn't fool me for a second. They weren't offering anything. They were dumping another load of poor souls down here, condemned to join our ranks. A heavy thud resonated from somewhere above. The lift was coming down. My hand instinctively reached for the syringe on my belt. The hunger was a constant companion now, a dull ache that grew sharper with every passing hour. Just one hit, the voice in my head hissed, just to get through this. The whine of the lift lowered in pitch as it reached the bottom. The metallic groan of the door opening slammed the decision shut. I shoved the damn syringe back in its pouch, a surge of anger replacing the desperate craving. We weren't weak anymore. We were something else, something monstrous, but we weren't slaves. The door hissed open, revealing a group of four figures in faded orange jumpsuits. They blinked in the red light, faces pale with fear. They hadn't seen us yet, hadn't noticed the mutations, the vacant hunger in our eyes, didn't know what awaited them. One of the newcomers, a young kid with wide, terrified eyes, took a step forward. Hello, is anybody there? Silence greeted him. Then a slow chuckle rose from old man Harris. We weren't here to greet them. Not anymore. We were here to show them the offering. The young kid froze, his bravado melting away faster than ice on a hot furnace. The others followed suit, four pairs of eyes darting nervously in the red light. It was then they saw us. A collective gasp tore from their throats. Their faces, a moment ago filled with fear, now displayed a raw, primal terror that mirrored something deep within me. They saw what the ooze had done to us, the warped flesh, the empty hunger burning in our eyes. One of the men, older and slightly broader than the others, took a tentative step back. What the hell is this place? His voice cracked with barely suppressed panic. Old man Harris shuffled forward, his glistening tendrils writhing like worms in a can. Welcome, he said, his voice a dry whisper. You've arrived just in time for the offering. The words hung heavy in the air, dripping with dark meaning. The young kid whimpered, glancing at the oozing black pit in the rock face as if suddenly understanding its purpose. Offering? The older man repeated, his voice tight. Offering to what? There was a long silence, broken only by the ragged breaths of the newcomers and the rhythmic gurgle of the ooze. Then I stepped forward. Something sparked within me, a remnant of the man I used to be. There's no offering, I said, my voice hoarse from disuse. Just another way to become like us, slaves to the damn stuff. The older man's eyes darted between me and the pit. A spark of defiance ignited in his gaze. He turned back to his group, his voice low but firm. We ain't going down without a fight. His words were like a match to dry tinder. The young kid squared his shoulders, a determined glint replacing his fear. The other two men, their faces grim, moved closer to him, forming a barrier. A cold dread settled in my stomach. They were outnumbered, but more importantly, they weren't broken yet. They still had the fight in them, a dangerous spark that could set everything ablaze. Old man Harris let out a chuckle. Fight all you want, he hissed. It won't change your fate. You'll join us one way or another. A low growl erupted from behind me. The others, 
their distorted faces devoid of human emotion, began to shuffle forward. The newcomers gripped whatever tools they had brought with them. Picks, drills, anything that could be used as a weapon. The stale air in the chamber vibrated with a primal tension. The newcomers brandished their flimsy mining tools like weapons. My gut churned. Opposing them stood the rest of our crew, twisted parodies of men, their faces masks of warped flesh and a single insatiable desire burning in their eyes, the craving for the corrupting ooze. Old Man Harris broke the silence. Foolish resistance, he hissed. You'll join us in the end, broken and begging for a taste. Before anyone could react, the young kid with the terrified eyes lunged forward. He swung his pickaxe wildly, the metal clanging harmlessly off Harris's metallic arm. The old man reacted with inhuman speed, his tendrils lashing out like vipers. They wrapped around the kid's throat, squeezing with pressure. The kid's eyes bulged, his face turning purple as his desperate gasps turned into strangled gurgles. A primal scream ripped from the older man, a sound so raw and grief-stricken it hung in the air of the cavern. He charged at Harris, his pick raised high. He swung with surprising strength, the pickaxe connecting with a crack on Harris's remaining shoulder. The old man shrieked, momentarily stunned, his grip on the kid slackening. The kid coughed and wheezed, gasping for air as he stumbled back. The older man shoved him towards the back of the group, his own chest heaving with exertion. In that same moment, the other two newcomers charged. One swung a metal drill at a hulking brute named Jake, who had been a decent miner before he was warped into a hulking monstrosity. The drill clattered harmlessly off his thick, mutated arm. The other newcomer, a wiry man with sweat dripping down his face, launched himself at me. I stumbled back, surprised by the sudden attack. He aimed a punch at my face, but I managed to duck just in time. The force of the mist blow propelled him forward, sending him crashing into a pile of mining equipment. He lay there groaning, clutching his arm at an unnatural angle. The chamber devolved into chaos. The newcomers fought with the desperation of cornered animals, their flimsy tools offering scant defense against our twisted forms. One of them landed a lucky blow on Jake, who roared in pain and lashed out with a savage backhand. The man crumpled to the floor, his body lifeless. Even with their desperation, the newcomers were hopelessly outmatched. One by one, the newcomers fell, their bodies broken and bloodied. The older man, his face contorted in a mask of grief and rage, stood alone against Jake. The hulking brute swung his mutated arm like a club, and the older man raised his pickaxe in a desperate block. The impact sent the pickaxe flying, and Jake's fist connected with the man's jaw with a crunch. He crumpled to the floor, unconscious. The silence that followed was heavy, broken only by the ragged breaths of my crew. They stood panting, their hunger momentarily sated by the violence. Old man Harris surveyed the scene, his tendrils twitching with a cruel satisfaction. Bring them to the offering, he said, his voice dripping with malice. A wave of nausea washed over me. I couldn't let this happen. Not anymore. The voice in my head, the one that had been whispering promises of the ooze for weeks, seemed to dim. But what else was there? I looked around at the carnage, at the twisted men I called crew. The metallic clang of Jake's boot connecting with the older man's head filled the cavern. Bile rose in my throat. It wasn't the brutality that turned my stomach. It was the cold, calculating efficiency with which they were securing the newcomers. We weren't butchers, not anymore. We were harvesters, gathering fresh meat for the offering, for the ooze. Old man Harris, his tendrils twitching with a glee, gestured to the broken bodies. Take them to the pit, make it quick. The others shuffled forward. But something had shifted within me. Rebellion. Loyalty. Desperation. A tangled mess of emotions warred for control. The fight, brutal and short as it was, had awakened something long dormant. Then I saw it. A glint of metal among the scattered equipment. The young kid's pickaxe. It lay half-buried under a dented toolbox. 
a faint glint of defiance in the dim red light. An idea, reckless and desperate, sparked in my mind. Without a sound, I inched backwards, my eyes darting from the newcomers to my crew. They were focused on dragging the bodies, their forms momentarily oblivious. My heart hammered in my chest, a frantic drumbeat against my ribs. I reached the pickaxe, my hand trembling as I grasped the cold metal handle. It was light in my hand, a poor weapon against the hulking brutes. Straightening up, I took a deep breath, the stale air burning my lungs. All eyes turned towards me as I raised the pickaxe. Stop! I said, my voice hoarse from disuse. A collective snarl filled the chamber. Old man Harris turned towards me, his face twisted in a mockery of a smile. You gonna join them, boy? He rasped, his voice dripping with amusement. No, I said, my voice gaining strength. This offering, it ends now. The amusement vanished from Harris's face, replaced by a cold fury. The others shuffled closer. You're weak, Harris hissed. The ooze will take you anyway. Why fight it? There's another way, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. We fight back. Take down the lift, cut off contact. We can survive here together. A wave of disbelief washed over their faces. It was a desperate plea, a flimsy hope in the face of their twisted addiction. But for a moment, something human flashed in their eyes. Then Jake stepped forward. He wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but his loyalty, however warped, ran deep. He's right, he rumbled, his voice surprisingly clear. We can make our own way. Harris let out a shriek. His tendrils lashed out, wrapping around Jake's mutated arm. He squeezed with inhuman strength. Jake roared in pain but held firm. Join me, brothers, he bellowed, his voice strained. Fight for your damn lives! Time seemed to stretch, seconds morphing into minutes as the crew stared, their faces contorted reflections of the internal war raging within. Old man Harris, his tendrils straining with the effort of crushing Jake's arm, let out a high-pitched whine. His face twisted further into a mask of fury. Weakness! He shrieked. The ooze will have you all! You can't fight it! But the seed of rebellion had been planted. Jake, his face contorted in pain, roared back. Shut your damn trap, Harris! We're done being slaves! A growl rumbled from deep within one of the others. Big Tom a former crewmate whose once jovial face was now a stitched-up mess, took a tentative step forward. His eyes, milky white and clouded with influence, darted between Harris and me. Then, with a groan that sounded like tearing metal, his mutated arm swung out. Not towards me or the newcomers, but towards Harris. It connected with a thud, sending the old man reeling back, his tendrils shrieking in protest. The dam had broken. A collective roar erupted from the remaining crew, a primal howl that seemed to shake the very rock walls of the cavern. They surged forward, a wave of warped humanity driven by a desperate hope for something more than mindless servitude. I stood there. The pickaxe clutched tightly in my hand. A reluctant participant in this sudden uprising. Doubt ate at me. Was this freedom or just another form of slavery? fueled by desperation instead of addiction. But before I could dwell on it further, the fight was upon me. One of the crew, a man whose name I couldn't recall, lunged at me. Instinct took over. I parried his clumsy swing with the pickaxe, the metal clanging against bone. He roared in frustration, lunging again. This time, I brought the pickaxe down hard, catching him on the shoulder. He screamed, a high-pitched, inhuman sound, and stumbled back, clutching his wound. The sight of blood, dark and glistening in the red light, momentarily stunned me. I wasn't a fighter, not anymore. But the alternative, becoming like them, a mindless husk, feeding on that oozing black pit, was too horrific to contemplate. The cavern devolved into chaos. The newcomers, who had huddled together in fear, saw their chance. The older man, his face bruised and bloody, snatched up a discarded wrench and charged at Jake, who was locked in a brutal struggle with Harris. The other newcomer, the wiry one with the injured arm, grabbed a metal pipe and joined the fray. 
The fight was brutal, a desperate tangle of limbs and weapons, the air filled with grunts, roars, and the thud of flesh on flesh. I fought, more out of a primal urge to survive than any real conviction. Each swing of the pickaxe felt heavier, each hit chipping away at the last vestiges of the man I used to be. Through the blur of the fight, I saw Jake land a crushing blow on Harris, sending the old man sprawling to the ground. His tendrils writhed uselessly, severed and sparking from the impact. A primal scream escaped Harris's lips, a sound that spoke of more than just physical pain. It was the shriek of a broken god, a creature denied its offering. The fight died down as quickly as it had begun. Silence descended after a beat, thick and heavy with the weight of what we'd done. Exhaustion painted every face with lines deeper than mere fatigue. The newcomers huddled together, the older man cradling his injured arm, his gaze flitting nervously between us and the oozing black pit. They'd seen the fight, the raw desperation that fueled our rebellion. What now? the older man asked, his voice hoarse. Big Tom, his mutated arm hanging limp at his side, shuffled towards the pit. A low growl rumbled in his throat. He stopped a hair's breadth away, his milky eyes fixed on the corrupting liquid. Then, with a shuddering breath, he turned away. A small victory, a single craving subdued. But for how long? We need to get out of here, I said, my voice rough from disuse. Seal the damn pit. Find another way out. Any way out. We had no idea if there was another way up another tunnel leading back to the surface. Old man Harris sprawled on the ground, his tendrils twitching uselessly, let out a cough. Fools, he croaked, his voice weak. You can't escape it. It will have you all. His words were a bucket of ice water, shattering the fragile hope that had begun to form. Was he right? Were we doomed to remain here, forever teetering on the edge of becoming mindless husks? Suddenly the cavern lights blinked, then sputtered and died. We were plunged into darkness, the only light the faint glow emanating from the pit. A collective gasp rose from the group, a sound laced with terror. Panic clawed at me, a primal fear of the unknown. In the darkness the whispers in my head seemed to grow louder, the voice promising a twisted comfort. But then a hand clamped roughly on my shoulder. It was Jake his face grim in the faint black light. We fight, he said, his voice firm despite the tremor in his hand. We find a way out, together. We fumbled around in the dark, grabbing what tools we could find. The darkness pressed in on us, suffocating and thick. There! A voice shouted from somewhere in the inky blackness. It was Big Tom, his voice thick with exertion. Light flashed ahead. We stumbled towards it, a ragged line of broken men. The sliver of light grew, revealing a narrow passage barely wide enough for a single man to squeeze through. Escape route? The older newcomer asked, desperation in his voice. Maybe, I croaked, my throat dry. One way to find out? One by one we squeezed through the passage. It was a tight fit, the rough rock scraping against our already aching bodies. The passage opened up into another cavern. A single light source hung from the ceiling. In the centre of the cavern stood a figure, hunched over a workbench littered with strange tools and vials filled with an unsettling, glowing liquid. The figure turned as we emerged from the passage, its face obscured by a hood. A collective gasp filled the air. It was a man, but unlike any we'd seen before. His skin was pale, his eyes glowing with an unnatural green light. A manic grin split his face, revealing rows of sharpened teeth. Welcome, he said, his voice a chilling whisper. You've come to the right place. A wave of dread washed over me, colder and more profound than the fear of the darkness. This wasn't escape. It was a different kind of trap. The newcomer stumbled back, his face a mask of terror. Who are you? he stammered. The figure threw back its hood, revealing a network of glowing green veins beneath the surface of his shaved head. He chuckled, a dry, humorless sound. Salvation, he hissed. The next stage in evolution. And you, he gestured towards us, his grin widening, are going to be a part of it. 
Panic seized me. This wasn't freedom, it was just another form of slavery, a different kind of offering. I lunged for the pickaxe on my belt, but before I could even reach for it, the cavern floor gave way beneath my feet. I screamed as I plunged into darkness, the others' panicked shouts fading above me. I landed with a bone-jarring thud, the air thick with the stench of damp earth and decay. Pain lanced through my leg, a searing agony that stole my breath. I lay there, gasping for air, the darkness pressing in on me. Then, a soft, sucking sound reached my ears. A faint glow in the distance, growing closer with every passing moment. The ooze. It had found another way. A whimper escaped my lips. There was no escape, no freedom. Just the darkness and the ever-present glow of the ooze, promising a twisted oblivion that seemed, in this moment, like the only mercy left. Centuries passed. The once distant planet, a mere designation on a star chart, faded from the memory of living men. It became a ghost, a whispered tale among the starfaring crews, a bleak warning about the insatiable hunger that lurked in the depths of unexplored worlds. Down in the darkness the ooze throbbed, a sinister heart in the bowels of the planet. It fed on the miners, twisting and consuming them, drawing out their agony in a symphony of suffering. Their screams faded into moans, their resistance withered into despair. Once distinct figures, the men merged into a single writhing mass that thrashed in the black light. They became an offering, nameless and forever enslaved. They served as a grim testament to the insatiable hunger that devoured civilizations. Not in an instant of fiery cataclysm, but in the slow, relentless corrosion of minds and souls. The figure with the glowing veins was nothing more than a discarded tool. His madness withered long ago, his experiments forgotten. His remains lay scattered across the workbench. And so, the grim dark cycle continued. Occasionally a new ship would stumble upon the planet, lured by the promise of some rare, valuable substance. Lights would descend into the depths, bringing fresh offerings. The planet itself became a graveyard, its surface dotted with the rusting remains of abandoned rigs, silent tombstones for countless lost souls. But below, in the darkness, the ooze feasted and waited. For in the vast, uncaring universe, dark hungers are eternal, and the only true offering is oblivion. <laughs>